Suicide Squad. <laughs> was directed by David Ayers and the stars Margaret Robbie. You already know who it stars. You saw the movie. But I'm representing today, and today is all about Batman. But but since Batman had like a couple scenes in the movie, I'm gonna discuss his scenes in the spoiler review. Now this is this is gonna contain some spoilers. Spoilers. If you've seen the movie and you hate people spoiling the movies, then this not this is not the video for you. Turn around, click away from this video, and watch my review. But if you don't care, this will be spoilers. You have been warned. All right, guys. So this movie started out just instantly, just instantaneously, like a like a music video. They had that shot and all of his credentials. They have Harley Quinn, all her credentials and stuff like that. Even they had Captain Boomerang and all of his credentials. They, they had pretty much they had like a music video, a different song for each character. And I didn't really care for that, but I understand because there's other there's people there are fans who are casual that haven't really read the comic book, so therefore they don't really know the characters that they're seeing. So therefore they have to do a little a little sequence where they have to show all their credentials and show who tell people who they are. So I understand that. And I don't understand why critics were blasting at that scene. Wow, this movie where, 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 where do I start? Where do I start? Basically they got you got all of the characters that's, that's pretty much just psychotic and just killers and stuff like that and Amanda Waller's talking with all these group of people and she's just like okay guys we had Superman came in he died what happened is going is this ever going to be an evil Superman we need a team of people who can fight this evil Superman you know you got all these guys some pencil pushers just talking about not how how this this not going to work and then she pops has a trick up her tire sleeve and says, "Bam!" Enchantress. And Enchantress pops up, all uh, wearing her all black and all. And then she looks like she haven't even taken showers for months. She got flies flying around her and stuff, and she's just doing all that voodoo shit and stuff like that. And then all of them, were, all of them were surprised. They were surprised at what they saw, and therefore they all were convinced to her activate Task Force X. So, and then all of a sudden, uh, Enchantress did some kind of. Sh- vision thing went to her brother and then her for she after that her her she got her brother and her brother transformed to incubus with her actually her brother's incubus and destroyed trains and all that and all of a sudden all of a sudden better bing bada boom you got this giant light in the sky and that happened real fast and that was oh, now that that, that that was way too fast it happened it was forced I I just kind of thought that that storyline Having the epic battle sequence that I, that kind of compared was compared to Fan Four Stick, and I didn't really like the way it was. They trying to make it this big scale, like oh, it's going to be this destruction of the city, destruction of the whole planet. But I'm thinking to myself, if you got a universe where Flash and Wonder Woman, and Batman exist, where were they? That's why I believe that should have been a smaller scale, like maybe the Suicide Squad go and take in like a, a secret operative, like. You know, death like death stroke is fucking shit up, and then the Suicide Squad fights him or something like that. Something small, not big scale, where a whole planets and solar systems are, are are in the balance, and you got Suicide Squad taking care of it. Where you got Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Flash, Martian Manhunter, all existing in the universe. You don't think they see that shit? I talk about. I love how Joker was into this movie. This J- Joker was. He was just great. I mean, he had he basically showed the love scenes between him and Harley Quinn. Now, this is more of a psychotic Joker, you know. He's just like, "Ooh, uh, you're mess with me sometime." Mm-hmm. 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 Dead shot, you know. He they had him demonstrate his abilities, and yet he's just on point. He had to, he was at a shooting range, shooting everything, boom, boom, all over, just headshots, headshots within headshots. Team Suicide Squad was great, but I think as three characters that didn't get fleshed out, and that was Boomerang, Katana, and Killer Croc, and it just seems like Katana didn't really do anything. But there is like a one scene, well, two scenes, well, one and a half scenes where she's where they develop her character, and the only way they can do that is her slicing through people in Japan and then asking this guy. Who who killed her husband? And then they showed this another scene where she was like, 
And then she puts her sword away, basically talking to her sword because she's talking to the soul of her husband. And that's all they show regarding to a tidbit of her origin. And they didn't really, they didn't do nothing for Captain Boomerang. They showed a scene where where basically she was with Joker and then they was just going through Gotham City and then Batman was coming in and then chasing them. You know, Batman was there, he was badass. And then all of a sudden Joker drove off the road and then they crashed in this big lake and then Batman swim came in, swim in, and then this part scared me a little bit. Like this part scared me a little bit. She just like act like she was dead. Dead alive and then i like when then batman came in with one bat, bat punch boom i'm batman they got in a helicopter helicarrier and then his helicarrier they got shot down and everybody started rolling around and but yet no one died no one died there was no sense of death everyone seemed all right unscathed like plane crash multiple times and no one everyone's all right so everyone got out the plane but Captain Boomerang was talking to Slipknot about escaping, and then they agreed, and then Slipknot tried to escape. He was like, oh, 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 in the way! And then once Rick Flag sees Slipknot escaping, he pressed the button, Slipknot, Slipknot, die, just instantly, die, boom, he's dead. And then El Diablo, I gotta tell you, El Diablo was probably the OP character. He has the power to blow fire and stuff like that, and yet when he blows fire, like, Instantly, people die, like, turn to dust. I like the bar scene, how you got true banter with the characters. And also, El, you can also feel El Diablo's story, and also you can feel for his character because he was having a tragic backstory. Because, you know, he lost his anger, he lost himself, he killed his whole entire family. And then he, and then he's like, I killed my family, homes. I'm too hot for this. Harley Quinn went to ruin it and said, I'm that kid. I don't know shit. Once they got to this, once they got to the final act, I don't know what was the tractors doing, but she was doing all these hip motions like a music video. I just, I just, I was like, what is going on? What, what is she doing? Like, I, oh, what is she doing? Agent Thirty Seven came in, swam underwater along with Killer Croc. Killer Croc was basically, you know, being held back while Angel 37 sacrificed himself to destroy Ichabus. But I kind of felt like Killer Croc should have, like, sacrificed himself. He sacrificed himself, kills off Killer Croc. I kind of wanted that to happen, but I'm not I'm not a dark person. I'm just saying it, it, it would fit into the story. It would have more character feels if, if Killer Croc gets killed off. So, therefore, they fight the Enchantress, and the Enchantress gives them images of what they want to see. She gave Deadshot an image of, of Deadshot killing Batman. Holy Quinn wanted to have a family with Joker. A regular person who wants to have a family like that. No insane psychotic person will have, will have a dream sequence about that. You basically question her sanity. Then Enchantress comes in and then tells everyone about she has a dream. She can save, she can save them by joining her. And then... Holly Quinn, he cuts off her heart and he takes it out. And then she, then she just gets knocked out like, oh. And then Rick Flag comes in. He has a heart in her hand, and then she was like, "You will not have the balls to break my heart or kill me." And then he squeezes the heart, and then she dies. Very end of the movie, Joker comes in with a SWAT team of military Navy SEALs, like I'm trying, like they all doing them hand signals, like, like. Yeah, Joker, like, how did Joker get access to all the Navy SEALs? Like, how many Navy SEALs working with Joker? I just don't understand that, but I guess that's Joker. Joker has his ways with people, you know? And then they save, and they save Harley Quinn. And then the movie is over, and then they got to an end credit scene. And the end credit scene, it was the most interesting credit credit scene. At the end credit scene, Bruce Wayne was talking to Amanda Waller about Suicide Squad, and basically Bruce Wayne was basically telling Amanda Waller to shut down her project. Or his friends, the Justice League, would shut her down. And at that moment, when she says, you look tired, you just need to stop working at night, that was a clear shot of him, her knowing that Bruce Wayne and Batman. And then Batman, was, then Batman left, telling her to shut, to shut the project down. I kind of wish he could have been like, shut it down. Oh, Batman. That's my spoiler review, Suicide Squad. Now, guys, it's Videos going just gonna come if you like everything you see and you agree. 
click right here, join the Batman family, and have more views on the way. Till then, ciao.